Hey everyone, welcome back to Nerd Talk, the weekly podcast show where we discuss all things during the week, including movies, games, manga, comics, etc., etc. To start today, we have another guest. As of the last episode, we had Warden Wayne from Spider-Man Lois. Today, we have Harry Osborne himself. Sean Reed is on here the show. Sean, welcome to the show, and also welcome to the first video podcast that we're doing. Awesome. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> no problem. Um, yeah, no, getting, get right into, we were, I, I started recording a little bit ago just to like, you know, add that, I guess we can just add like what we were talking about earlier to the end of the podcast. But, um, but you know, like I was wondering like, you know, how, how did you guys decide to do like an old, like, you know, cause this is like classic Harry, like drug addiction, Harry, when did you guys decide to do that? Like how, how did that come up? Um, well that was, um, before Gavin had even figured out a, uh, a main storyline for the film. He knew that if Harry was going to be in it, he wanted to, um, he wanted it to be set after the death of Norman and Gwen and he wanted it to, uh, uh, be about Harry's drug addiction and stuff. So his whole thing was right off the bat. He wanted to, uh, kind of, uh, portray these, the, the layers of these characters that you don't necessarily see in, uh, adaptations. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I enjoy the other Harry's, um, in the that we've seen so far but they have kind of they weren't explored as much as they could have so it was it was always gavin's like number one thing to um show the sides of harry and mj that we haven't really seen before and it was like a huge selling point for me to uh to want to do it right yeah no that was uh definitely something that like i was gonna touch up on was like harry his drug addiction yeah because i remember reading like those old comics and like those were never like it, it was kind of like in a way touched up on in amazing spider-man 2 with dane DeHaan, mm -hmm. his adaptation like it wasn't a drug addiction but definitely like you could like see the symptoms of like an addict so like it was kind of yeah, yeah, touched yeah. up there but like it never was gone into full force um so i really like i'm really appreciating that like and like i love the freaking the costume design that you guys are doing dude like i'm gonna put some pictures up on screen but like the costumes are like ripped straight from like classic spider-man comics i <laughs> love that so much um gab do you have a question that you want to go ahead and throw out of um is there any like harry from any of the um like the movies or tv shows or anything that you kind of took some inspiration from um, the, the, uh, the only one that I kind of, uh, rewatched before shooting and, like, pulled things one was, um, Harry in, uh, the, the MTV cartoon. Mm, I wanted oh to try God. to, uh, yeah. kind of capture, capture that kind of demeanor and, like, the, um, a big thing that the three of us, me, Warden, and Gav wanted to do was, um, show, like, the differences between, um, Peter and Harry, you know, like, physical and, um, and in turn, more internal and we wanted to like have them have completely different demeanors completely different looks and uh the new animated series is like a really good example of that yeah like that was you know kind of leading into what i was gonna ask like why like if you had to describe what direction you are taking with harry you know how would you like put that into words how would you like describe compared to like let's say like you know james Franco or dane Dehan or even any of the animated versions of harry like how does yours differ from them? Um, I mean, it's a lot. It's 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 more. Uh, I tried to mix the two because I think they both did um, different things really well. Like um, James had this really uh, kind of charismatic, confident demeanor, mm -hmm. and then um, Dane was like a lot more tortured, and he was a lot more. Uh, he he seemed easily bro broken yeah i um, I, I definitely to, felt like he was explosive i felt like he was explosive dane to hunt yeah harry yeah he, he was he was more emotional yeah um and i wanted to try to like mix the two and have uh have this uh confidence kind of kind of be a mask you know he has like this cockiness that he uses to you know he's, he's he builds uh, this own character for himself to kind of stray away from you know the issues he has with his father and uh the issues he has with drugs and things like that right yeah no i i have to bring this up because i just saw it today the rock as your dad in the movie yeah, yeah. He, he posted on his instagram story those who don't know <laughs> that dwayne the rock johnson was gonna be playing norman osborn in spider-man <laughs> lotus I don't he's, know. Uh, he's definitely eating up a lot of the budget, but oh, I yeah. think it's gonna be worth it. In worth the end. it. Worth it. Definitely. Could you imagine that? 
Holy <laughs> shit. That would be terrified. I'm sorry, man. Like, because, like, I'm thinking, Him like... Him in a Green Goblin suit. Yeah, like, I'm traumatized. thinking... Well, like, I'm not even thinking, like, Green Goblin suit. I'm thinking, like, Ultimate Spider-Man, where it's, like, freaking, like, he's, like, the Hulk. Oh, yeah. He, like, transforms into, like, a <laughs> demonic beast. That's what I would think Dwayne Durack Johnson would go. But, no, I've seen the concept art. I know you guys are going with, like, a more classic, like, he's actually in, like, a suit kind of look. Um, mm-hmm. So, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely excited for that. I, I was going to ask, like, you know... It, obviously, you can't give anything away because of spoilers and stuff. But is there like a villain of this movie? And like, I'm not meaning like you know, like psychologically. I mean like actual like character villain or like without giving anything away. I, mean, I don't want you to spoil anything. The thing is, it's um, it's not going to be a. There, there's no main villain. Right. Is a, is the thing? Like you're definitely gonna you're gonna see. Uh, villains that you recognize from the comics, mm. um, but there's not going to be like this big um, build up. There's not going to be like this main antagonist that ends in this final battle in mm. the city. There's not going to be any of that, um, but you will see. You will see familiar faces. Right. That's what I was kind of. That's what I was getting from like the vibe of the trailer. Cause like um, Max, I think that's his name. The the kid who collects Spider Man. Uh, he followed me on, uh, Instagram and we got to like talking a little bit and, uh, I was definitely getting the vibe, but like, this isn't like your, this is kind of like, I feel like this is like, I don't even know. I'm trying to think of like a movie to like describe it. This is like a Logan S kind of thing. There wasn't really a bad guy of Logan. It was kind of just like, you know, like, you know, things that led to another. It's just kind of like the path that just went, um, obviously towards the end of the film, there was kind of, you know, a bad guy, but like for the most part of Logan, there was like not really a bad guy. Um, and I was kind of looking, I'm looking forward to that with this film. Cause it's just like, it's going to explore much more of a, a version of the Spider-Man character that we haven't really seen. You know, it's like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just, it's not as action packed. And I really, I, I really appreciate that kind of thought. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, um, the main thing we wanted to, uh, convey with the movie is, you know, three people coping, mm-hmm. you know, just three human beings trying to get over something and how each of their coping mechanisms are affecting each other and how they can eventually unite and um and get over a hard time right so those three people i'm, I'm just guessing at this point this is harry peter and mj i'm guessing those three characters yeah. are yeah so yeah that was like you know sorry gavin i'm you know, go ahead gavin you ask a question <laughs> i kind of just no, went you're off. gonna you're gonna finish your sentence what um, were you? no but like that was my thing is like how because obviously they're probably getting over obviously the dramatic death of Gwen and uh, that whole situation that happened. How does yeah. the death of Gwen Stacy, which I think you guys are you guys are like kind of doing Spider Man Blue, right? That comic series. Yeah. So how does the death uh, of Gwen? Yeah. What were you gonna say? Yeah, it's uh, it's inspired by Blue. Yeah, it's not like a straight up adaptation, but it's mm-hmm. it's inspired. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what my question was like, how are you guys going to incorporate? Uh, death of Gwen Stacy into the kid who collects Spider-Man. Cause I really love, those are like two of my favorite Spider-Man stories of all time. Mm-hmm. So I just, I was really curious about how that's going to kind of tie into one. I, based off the, the description I read, um, it was like, you know, I guess like it's a way it's like Peter's kind of deciphering whether or not he wants to give up the mantle while at the same time also deciding if he should be Spider-Man for this boy. So. Yeah. There's a, uh, you know, Peter's, uh, obviously, it's a really difficult time for him because he blames Spider-Man. Like, if 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 Spider-Man didn't exist, Gwen would still be alive. Mm-hmm. It's simple as that. And now, you know, there's this kid who's this huge fan, and um, it's uh, it was it was kind of uh, a vehicle for Peter to kind of come to realize the importance of of who he is, and and kind of come to terms with the fact that he is Spider-Man and that is something that he has to do. Mm-hmm. Um, Gab, do you have a question you want to ask? Yeah. Um, so is there like a kind of a Spider-Man type of thing that kind of brought you into knowing about all these characters and stuff that like first kind of inspired your way into like Spider-Man knowledge? Yeah. Uh, for me, it was the, uh, the '90s animated series when I was mm. really young, and then and then the Raimi trilogy soon Ooh, after that. Oh fuck! It. Oh goddamn! <laughs> you guys are about to bond like crazy because he 
<laughs> this this guy is a loyalist when it comes to the Rima trilogy. It's insane. Top tier. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm I'm still an Andrew stan, so I'll admit it. I love Andrew. Andrew, there's a lot of I I, I do think Tasm is underrated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For the most Tasm part. two. They did, they did a lot of great things. Tasm two is eh, but I love the first one. The first one is uh ah, yeah. phenomenal. I, I don't even get me started on Tom Holland's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, why? I don't feel like getting jumped in the comments today. Dude, honestly, <laughs> I I literally because I try not to bash Spider Man. Like I love every single portrayal of Spider Man that has ever been brought, both to screen to games, like everything. You know, Josh Keaton was like my favorite Spider Man up until Yuri Lowenthal. Like Yuri Lowenthal is my favorite Spider Man. Probably gonna be Warden Wayne because my boy is gonna kill it. But you know, I just I try not to bash any character like that and i think you guys kind of do the same thing i've seen gavin kind of you know be like hey don't compare and contrast like this is you know two different kinds of cinema but you know to me you know tom holland i feel like has been babied a lot in the mcu you know i don't think he's really been given his spotlight which you know he kind of got in far from home but still kind of was also babied at the same time yeah, so I think he just needs to have like a change of like pace when it came to his character arc. But uh but now Toby it's just I I can't say one wrong thing in front of him about Toby cuz he will dump my ass. You can say whatever you want. I just I don't know. I just I grew up with the Raimi trilogy, so I'm just kind of I really too. I mean, I did too. Like I grew up with the Raimi trilogy, but I think the thing the only two things that really bother me about you know, Sam Raimi's trilogy is the organic webbing that I, I always kind of was bothered that I like the idea that Peter's a genius. So he made web shooters. I never liked the organic, you know, idea. And, um, I never liked how serious he really was. Like he made jokes a couple of times here and there, but like, it was like, so, you know, I love a serious Spider-Man, but I also love a jokester. I love like the campy, you know, making cracking jokes here and there. So I don't know. He just, I don't know. That's just how I am. You know, I loved Andrews. Andrews was like quintessential perfect. It was dark. It was campy. It was funny. Like, I don't know. That's just my take. What are your guys' takes on Toby and Tom and Andrew? I mean, I think um, uh, a big uh, appeal to superheroes in general is um, even if they, you know, some of them are obviously written more like their comic counterpart than others. But at the end of the day, if... um, certain people are going to be drawn to certain characters. And uh, there are a lot of people nowadays, especially uh, younger people who really can relate to Tom. And I think that's great. You know, if, if you can find yourself in a character who's larger than life like that, then all the power to you. Right. Gavin, do you have any thoughts? I mean, it's, I don't have a problem with Tom. Like in general, it's just the whole, him being baby kind of thing. Um, that's kind of what I really liked about Toby Spider-Man. He kind Everything of grew on his on own his after own. the death of Uncle Ben. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The same thing with Andrew. It, he was kind of he went up at his own pace and did his own thing. But then, when it comes to Tom Holland, I mean, it just there's like no mention of Uncle Ben, and there's it's, it's like it's more of like an Iron Man. Mm. Iron Man was that. Iron Man was the Uncle Ben in the situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's kind of my, that's my main really only complaint about it um getting back to lotus and everything like that um what was like you know sean what was um was there anything specifically on set that kind of gave you the most difficulty like whether that be like a line or like wardrobe or like whatever like what was something that gave you difficulty when trying to just kind of get it done um there was a there was on, on on my last uh, shooting night. You know, we we've been going uh, for like over tw- over eleven hours, and um, I was uh, I was crashing on caffeine. I was super tired, and um, I just I, I I kept like I I couldn't get I couldn't get the lines out properly, and I had to like go take a break, and uh, I was like freaking out to Gavin because the whole crew was waiting on me, and. It's just things like that. Like sometimes, I guess you're just not in the right headspace, or something happens. I was also that was when I was originally scheduled to fly out in like two hours, so I was kind of freaking out. I was stressed out. Um, but uh, 
Gavin was able to get me back in the moment and um, kind of calm the anxiety a bit. But yeah. other than that, it's 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 been pretty uh, smooth sailing, I think. That's awesome. I'm glad to you know hear that. Um, Gav, do you have anything? Yeah. Do you have like a top moment, like favorite moment on set, or maybe like a favorite castmate that you shared a scene with? Kind of bouncing right off my question. That's sick. Nice. Oh. Nice, nice one. Uh, I'm trying to find a way to word this without, without spoiling a... anything. Really? That was yeah. the same problem we came against with Warden because we asked Warden a couple of these questions and he was like, I don't know what to say without, you know, giving it away. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the scenes with Warden. I have a couple scenes with Warden um, that are fun um, just because we've been friends for so long and uh, we, we we bounce off each other pretty well. Um, Bro, other you than Warden that, they're... Me. You and Warden fucking kill me. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen both you guys' Instagram of, like, you holding, like, him holding you in the fucking Spider-Man yeah. suit. Like, that just, that floors me. I, I would kill just to be on set just to see that, that kind of mm-hmm. action, you know. Like, you guys, I, it's it, probably, it, it's, it gets pretty fun. It get, it's probably so different, though. Like, you guys are, like, Warden and Sean versus Peter and Harry. Like, it's just, like, probably so fucking different. Yeah. Like, that's just... It, it's a completely different dynamic, yeah. Yeah, that's like a completely different dynamic and different chemistry that I would like love to see. Um, I I need to ask a question only because uh, it was I thought it was funny to me and uh, I wanted to ask about it. What did Eunice do on set? What did he? What was he there for? Because I've I've been following Eunice like I've been following Real World of Flash. I should say that was his old account, you know, for since twenty fourteen. You know, I I followed him forever. And so to see him on set and see him with you guys, I was like, okay, what is he doing there? That's like, you know, contributing anything besides being a crackhead, I would say. Yeah. Um, he, uh, he acted as a, um, he basically, he, he, f- again, I have to be kind of careful. Um, <laughs> I thought you were about to say, Hey, he didn't really do anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like- yeah. He was just, just getting in the way, you know, just, Getting us coffee when we need it, stuff like that. I hope you know um, this. That would be funny as hell. He would like fill in wherever we needed him to fill in. So if we needed him to like hold up a diffuser on a light, he would do that. If we needed him to go on a on an energy drink run, he would go do that. He okay, would, so he was just like a part of the crew. He was literally there, just yeah, yeah. He was like he was like a multi tool of of things. You know, he was incredibly helpful, and we loved having him. We love Eunice. Awesome man. You know, I, I, I kept seeing him, like, on, like, you know, Gavin's Instagram, your Instagram, Warren's Instagram, and I was just sitting there, I was just like, what is he even really doing there? Like, what specifically is he doing? <laughs> um, you know, that kind of, that kind of was like, you know, Gavin kind of asked that question, I'm gonna go in a little more detail on it, but, like, what was, you know, your favorite, without, like I said, without spoiling anything, what was your favorite moment on set with everybody, when everybody was there? You know, everybody was filming or not filming together. Maybe you like, cause I don't know if you all have scenes together or not, but what was your favorite moment on set with everybody there? Um, there was this moment we, uh, there's a, there is a scene with the four of us that we've, uh, that was when we got like the big cast photos together. Um, we, uh, we tried to shoot that, I think a day or two before we actually shot it and it just started pouring Mm -hmm. down rain and we like we like waited underneath this uh this little uh cover thing just waiting for it to stop raining and it just it would not stop it 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 rained harder and harder and harder and we we eventually just called off the shoot but that was fun because it was one of the first moments where we all kind of like the cast i mean we all kind of just like talked um outside of the film Mm mm-hmm you know, I, I remember – that was in New York, right, when you guys were there in New York? I mean, I seen, yeah. Yeah, I remember hearing that you guys were, like, in New York because I was, like um, – I, I try to go to New York as much as I can. I've only been there, like, you know, twice, I would say, recently. But um, when I heard you guys were in New York, I was, like, oh, my God, because I knew the storms were coming. I was, like, I was really wondering about that. And then I heard, like, when you guys were filming in Times Square, how, like, you know, fans were, like, coming up and actually helping you guys film. And I just thought I just always thought that was really cool that like you guys have already reached such an impact with people that like you know people who you've never met before are willing to help you film this project and like I don't know I just I always love that I always love that aspect. 
at the Times Square shoot, I was I was completely out that day. I was I, like I had my headphones in. I was just when if if the cameras weren't rolling, I was not paying attention to anything. Mm-hmm. So uh, that was uh, I didn't get to see any of that stuff. But they they told me afterwards. And I'm like, oh damn, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, no, I when because like I said I saw it in the trailer. Um, you know, you're the one shot like of you looking around Times Square. I don't, obviously, you know, I know you can't spoil it. I know I keep saying that, but what is that shot? Like, what is that shot? What is, why is he, conf- that was like one of the few questions I had about the trailer was like, why is he in Times Square as if like he has never been to New York City in a day in his life? Is he high? Like. If you can't answer it, don't answer yeah, it. Yeah, no, uh, if you can't answer well, it. He's, he's definitely uh, on a little something, but, mm-hmm. um. The thing about that scene is, um, without context, I, I can see why it, how it would make no sense. But the, the it's not finished. Let's just say that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, well, I kind of figured that, like, you know, a lot of the scenes in the teaser trailer were like, because like I pieced together a good amount of them. You know, I pieced together like the warden, you know, shot of him just kind of like staring away. I think, obviously, probably has to do with somebody, you know. He's probably, Peter's probably pissed someone off, but like, you know, the kid, the scenes with like Spider-Man and the kid in his room, obviously I pieced all that together. And like the, my, my favorite shot was probably a tie between your shot in Times Square or the shot of, uh, Peter and Gwen's friend picture and the Spider-Man mask next to it. I absolutely, I'm such like a, I was just super... comes... what were you gonna say? Yeah, that's actually really interesting because Gavin got that shot like very last minute, like like two days before the trailer dropped. Probably he um wow waited till it was dark, and at like eleven thirty at night, he just set up some lights in uh in in the area he's sleeping and just filmed it himself. Wow, that's that's you yeah, know I I just I don't know why I just loved because I'm very much a cinematographer cinematography kind of person. And so watching those mm-hmm. shots play out, it was just like, because this film is already blowing my expectations away. Like, it is so beautifully, like, I bought the Blu-ray for this damn thing. Like, I'm already you know, <laughs> waiting for this project. Like, it just, it looks so beautiful to me. Like, every single scene that you guys have shown so far. And, like, I, like, I can actually show you. I have, like, record time, like, I think, like, 15 hours of Sunlight and Ashes, the song that was in the trailer, looped on my phone. Oh my I've been god, just, that's crazy. I, I love that song. Because I loved that song before you guys even put it in the trailer. I was so hyped. Like, you, my dad was watching the trailer with me. And I was freaking out because I loved that song so much. But nobody knows it. And I was so excited to like, <laughs> see it in a, in a project that I've been following so, you know, religiously. So, it was just, it was, I, I was so excited when you guys released that trailer. It was awesome. Um, yeah. The, um, also, the thing about the teaser is... Um, it's uh it's it's pre it's not it hasn't that's not like final uh grade or anything too mm-hmm. i just thought i'd say that because some people were uh iffy about the color grading but it was just like it was just a teaser you know it's a little tease of of what's to come mm-hmm. but tristan uh our cinematographer has been doing an incredible incredible job yeah, props to tristan man that that stuff is insane also i didn't find any problem with the color grading i've watched i've watched the trailer like seven thousand yeah. times like i I personally love the, <laughs> the color grading of it, man. Um, kind of steering off of Spider-Man just for a sec, only because uh, I saw it on your Instagram story. We actually kind of touched up on it in DMs a little bit. Um, you know, someone asked you about DC and, like, any DC characters that you would like to mention. You mentioned Scarecrow. Is there, like, any other character specifically you'd want to, you know, be in, like, a DC project for? Um, I know you said Scarecrow and... Uh, the Riddler, I think you said. Um, yeah, I, that, I think that question was um, was Batman villains. For some reason, a lot of people have been supporting the Scarecrow idea, mm-hmm. which is cool. Um, but I think um, if if I could play any comic book character, it would be uh, Morpheus from Sandman. Mm. They're already making the Netflix show now, so yeah. uh, I've I've lost all hope. But I think that would be <laughs> that'd be super cool. Well, if you know, you could convince Gavin. I know he said that he's not going to do any other real comic book projects after Lotus, but if you could convince him, that would be I would I would watch that. That'd be dope. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Um, mm. 
Yeah, no, I bring up DC and stuff because I, like I said, I touched up on it a little bit. We're doing a Batman project, and uh, yeah, I definitely I could see you playing Scarecrow. It would be, mm -hmm. Thank you, yeah, it would be an amazing thing. I think it's because you definitely give I forget his name, but uh, the guy who played Scarecrow in Nolan's trilogy, you give that vibe off. Like you look like that guy, and like you, I could definitely see. Yeah, no, Killian Murphy. Yeah, Killian Murphy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, you. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Yeah. Yeah, you look exactly like him in my opinion. That was my first thought when I saw you. I was like, <laughs> he looks like Scarecrow. Um, Thank but, you. Yeah, no, it's. I could definitely see that. I'm glad that, like, you know, I've never heard an answer for, like, you know, Sandman. Like, I've never actually, like, out of all the characters, like, people have named, you know, I never thought about yeah, Sandman. Sandman's a good comic book series, too. I love that series. Right. It's my, it's probably, it's probably my favorite piece of fiction ever. I love it so much. My favorite fi piece of fiction would probably have to be either, um, it's a tie between the Dark Knight Returns storyline with Frank Miller, who made that, and Spider-Man Blue. I I adore Spider-Man Blue so much. Um, Great pick, yeah. Yeah. I There's there's another Spider-Man story, too, that uh, it's not really mentioned about. But um, it's about this kid who... It's kind of like the boy who collects Spider-Man, but not, the, not really at the same time. It's uh, about this kid who's, like, you know, going through this hard time, and he imagines Spider-Man in his head as like one of his like close friends and um he you know ha he finds out that he you know has had like a heart he's had a hard life and he finds out he's having to move away and you know he's convinced himself that spider-man is there and when he has to say goodbye to spider-man spider-man takes off his mask and it's an african-american little boy and he imagines spider-man being an african-american man oh yeah 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 and i yeah. fucking love that storyline it is so yeah, it's it so representative to what spider-man is because it's just like mm -hmm. anybody can wear the mask kind of thing and like i always it, that's that storyline always stuck with me because you know i'm an indian you know guy and uh yeah i know there is an indian spider-man but i always like the aspect of spider-man just in general because you never know who could be under there um you know so like for me it's just those three storylines when it came to spider-man blue kid who collects spider-man and that one it always like kind of stuck with me in terms of you know a piece of fiction that i love so dearly so uh gab do you have a question you want to ask him oh uh, well just real quick when you guys were talking about um sandman and all that i got a notification on twitter saying that netflix is, netflix is the sandman just wrapped filming so i just thought that was funny because it's like right what that was that. really weird. i know i saw it and i was like oh that's that's interesting that's ironic and weird as hell mm -mm. yeah um, questions, uh, I don't remember what I wrote I know, it's down. hard to come up with questions on the spot, isn't it? Like, yeah. um, I think I have your questions saved. Hang on. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh yeah. Did you take any traits from other live action Harry Osborns to bring into, uh, your conversion? No, uh, not really. I tried to, um, I tried to stay as far away from, um, the two previous live action ones as possible. I, I, I purely tried to focus on the comics and, uh, the new animated series. Um, I didn't want to rehash, you know, things that people have already seen and stuff like that. Even, even the, the great, great things. I wanted to try to come up with them on my own. Mm -hmm. Um, I've, I've talked about this in my story a bit, but, um, the uh, the only live action kind of thing that I took inspiration from is um, this film called um, My Own Private Idaho. River Phoenix's performance in that I, I I took a couple things from that, like little mannerisms and things, because I thought that uh, I thought that it'd work in the context of Lotus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that was definitely something that uh, you know piqued my interest because a lot of actors they do take inspiration from previous. I don't want to say interpretations, but definitely previous like adaptations of the characters, you know, whether that be in film or, you know, animation or comics or whatever, you know, and not just for comic, like comic book movies, like, you know, for instance, Joker, uh, Joaquin Phoenix's portrayal of the character, he, he said himself, he like took major inspiration from both Heath Ledger as well as, um, I forget that one movie, uh, he's a taxi driver, he's a taxi driver and yeah. yeah. And he, he, like I said, like, well, you guys all saw Joker. That was, that movie was phenomenal. Like, you know, so 
it's definitely interesting that you i'm glad you're taking your own twist on the character and you're definitely bringing something because i like i said man i'm so excited for your guys's you know release of this movie um your guys i think you guys all are gonna kill it uh you know i don't know i just i'm just so blown away by this project you guys i'm glad that you guys are putting so much effort thank into you, it. Thank you. so um but yeah no uh what's another one that i had oh yeah uh, another question, Gavin had this written down. Um, what is your favorite like piece of Spider Man like media, I would say, like movies or shows or you know I would say movies. What's your favorite Spider Man movie? Two. Spider Man two. Yeah, well yeah. that's that's not surprising. That's pretty much everybody's favorite Spider Man movie. <laughs> yeah. That's even that's even my second favorite Spider Man movie. Like I'll admit it. Like it's I don't know. It's that movie that movie set the bar for I think superhero movies. Yeah, I, I honestly, I can't see it being beaten. I personally in like my opinion. Yeah, I personally like Into the Spider Verse, um, at number three, Spider Man Two at number one, and then Amazing Spider Man for me at number one, like all the way. Spider Man Two is at number two. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, what's what's some other stuff that I was gonna bring up? Um, oh yeah, when he came back, swinging back to, like, DC, um, yo, with the whole Scarecrow idea in mind, would you actually ever consider doing a Scarecrow-type character in film? Or even Scarecrow himself? I mean, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I, I love, uh, his entire character, um, I feel like there's a lot to explore, mm -hmm. um, I think all that it would depend on after that is the script and the story and, and the context of the character. Right. You know, yeah, of uh, course. I, I, I personally like Jonathan Crane. Like, I like the Scarecrow identity, but, like, Jonathan Crane has such an interesting backstory to me. Yeah. So, like, the idea that, like, you know, because he was – his I, his identity was kind of touched up on in Batman Begins when, you know, he was the main bi villain. But it never really came full, like, full circle and never, like, really was – you know, touched up on besides that little idea. So for me, Jonathan Crane would definitely be one of those characters of DC Batman lore that I would like to see explored. Um, another mm -hmm. interesting character that I feel like you would do phenomenal with is Calendar Man, in my opinion. I think you'd be a great, Calendar like, Man? yeah, Calendar Man. Um, I uh, I saw, I don't remember what exactly I saw. I saw, um, oh no, I did. I saw an animated uh, scene from one of the new animated Batman movies. I think it's the Long Halloween that's coming mm -hmm. out soon, and uh, you know he who the guy who's playing him is actually the guy who's playing Polka Dot Man in the new Suicide Squad movie. Um, oh and, yeah, 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 and uh, just the demeanor that Calendar Man presents in the animated film is so much like it is. It's so menacing while at the same time just so like mysterious and i feel like that would be a really good character for you to play i think like yeah uh, i don't know much about him um i I'll, I'll definitely check that out now that you mention it mm -hmm. yeah no i um you know because like obviously i don't know how you guys characters are going to be presented on screen when it comes to lotus but you know based off what i've seen it definitely seems like you have taken like a dive into your character and like really kind of you know found your footing and like kind of got, came in touch with your characters so to see, like, a Calendar Man or a Scarecrow with you in it, that would be very, you know, interesting to see. I would like that. That would be dope. I would love to, I would love to do that. Yeah, man. Um, Gab, do you have any other questions you want to ask him? I can't think of anything. No. All right, now. All right, well, I think that about wraps it up then, you know. I think I've pretty much asked all my fair share, you know, um... Other than that, pretty much just Sean, you want to be freaking friends? <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, I just, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I love all you guys, and I just, like I said, I appreciate everything you guys are doing. So, uh, hopefully next we'll yeah, probably have... thank you so much for the support. Yeah, no problem, man. Uh, hopefully next we'll probably have Max on the podcast, him and his mom. Apparently, yeah, his mom is in Lotus. I didn't know about that. Um, Max is yeah, real-life mom. his mom, mom plays... Uh place his mom yeah yeah that's awesome i he was uh dming well his mom was dming me on uh, instagram about the podcast and uh she was like uh hang on let me let me see what she actually said she said 
uh, Max, Maxwell Fox is in on the podcast, and his mom, who played his mom in the movie, is also in. I was like, awesome. Did not know that at all. That's kind of cool. I like that <laughs> aspect. That's awesome. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we'll have them on next. Like I said, I want to get a podcast. Like, the big one that I want to do is, like, everybody, you know, here. That'd be so cool to, like, yeah. have everybody there. Um, I know Warden's down to do it. Uh, he, you know, I've already brought the idea up to him, so he said he was down to do it. Um, Sean, if you want to do it, obviously, you know, you guys totally are down. Too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Um, everybody go yeah, check out, so much for having me. no problem. Everybody go check out Spider-Man Lotus when it hits on YouTube in 2022. Do you guys have like a date yet or do you have a date, but you can't tell, or do you just not have a date? We have, we have an idea for a date. Uh, it's, it's a secret for now though. Ah, uh, well I tried. Uh, but yeah, go check out Spider-Man Lotus on uh, YouTube in 2022. Also, you guys can go check out the Indigo. I'm going to leave a link in the description down below if you guys want to go support it. Also, get posters and the Blu-ray. Like I said, I bought that. So, yeah, all that stuff. It will be all linked down below. But, Sean, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Love you, dude. And I will see you later. Okay, man. All right. Take care, yep. man. <laughs> He's playing um, Tim Harrison started in on like June 4th or something, I think. And then, uh, the rest of us started June 22nd or 3rd, I think. Right. Yeah. I remember when I, when I did the podcast with Warden, um, we did it back in May and he said something about like starting early June to like, you know, mm -hmm. start production on it. So yeah, no, you guys have been at this for a while. Like that's yeah. Yeah. Also, dude, I, I know you saw my Instagram story. I hope you did not take offense to me calling your character look fucking horrible. Because that's... I think that was kind of what you guys were going for. But I was like... Yeah, I, it, de it definitely was. I read I read my post that I posted. And then I saw that you said I was like, oh, fuck. I hope he doesn't get the wrong impression. That, like... It's like... Because <laughs> I was like... I was like, he looks terrible. And then I, like, fucking added another one. I was like, that's a good thing. That's not like, yo, I don't mean to, like, sound like an ass. Like... It just you that trailer blew me away, dude. Like I, I was no, yeah, of course we uh we definitely wanted to. Gavin's exact words: the makeup artist were make him look as fucked up as possible. Right, like it's just like yeah. it's one of those things where like because you guys are going. Well, I guess we'll we'll save it for the podcast. I guess I can you know, but I'm just I'm really excited with the direction you guys are taking with Harry. Uh, all right, let me. Uh, I'm gonna just start right now. I guess. Um, all right, three.